Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. Today, Craig and I are really excited. We actually have our peak performance coach on. His name is Thor Conklin. And Thor has been helping us stay accountable to each other, stay accountable to our business, stay accountable to a lot of things in our life, and just really helping um, peak perform our lives. And we thought it'd be pretty, pretty insightful to have Thor on today because we've been got get we've received so much value, and um, really wanted to just get him on and bring him on the podcast and let some of you all hear some of his wisdom and um, solution solving to the grind we all go through. Isn't that right, Craig? Yes, sir. Uh, Thor, you've been great. Pete and I have been working with you for a uh, couple months now, and um, you came highly referred through some real peak performers in their own right. Um, I, I figured these guys were like commissioned salespeople for you, <laughs> the, <laughs> imploring us to, to hire you. And uh, you were so gracious to actually help us both at the same time, which adds a whole different dynamic, having you accountable and also Pete freaking text messaging me to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So I'm excited for you to add the value that you've added to us, to the group. And uh, welcome to the podcast, man. Man, thanks for having me on. I'm really looking forward to it. You, you know when someone's professional, Craig, when they've got a better podcast set up than you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a logo shirt, too. And a logo shirt. There you go. Yeah, well, I mean, and, just, and like perfectly placed stuff. Like, look at, look at my background. It's like horrible. My dog's on the couch. Like, Thor's is like everything in place. Be badass every day. Like, it's just, we're such amateurs. What is wrong with us, dude? Well, I mean, Thor's got a real podcast. I mean, we should. We well, should. Wait, what are you calling this? Well, I mean, this is a dental pack pro- podcast. I think it's like dog years. Having like, you know, <laughs> seven, like 104. You have a dental podcast with 100,000 downloads. We're like, we're legit. But for Thor at 100,000 downloads, that would be like a Sunday morning. So, <laughs> a, dog, a dog years podcast. Yeah, it's a different, it's a different scope. If we want to change this thing from the dental practice podcast to, uh, you know, um, to the, to the bulletproof podcast, then, then, then we have to compete in a different arena. But anyway, enough of that distraction Thor, Let's get down to business, man. Yeah, absolutely. So the, so, first, good so the fruit, first order of business, we were, we were not, we were talking just a little bit right before we got on and, um, Thor's one of the things that was really valuable. The first thing that Thor did with Peter and myself, he did it alone was he took out all the things that were challenging us, all the, all the massive rocks in our lives and helped us map it all out. And when you put all that mental tornado on paper, you get such clarity. And uh, Pete had did it, done it first, and you l- literally reported back to me like, man, that was incredible. Because you see how many of the things that you're trying to accomplish are all vertically integrated with each other. So Thor, if you don't mind, like what's, what's your power? What's your, what's your, what's your what's, superpower? Yeah, what's Thor's yeah. superpower? I mean, you have a name like Thor, you gotta have a superpower, right? You know, it's it's pretty interesting because I I met a young woman uh, recently and she said, you know, you're really an artist. I was like an artist. That's the last thing I am. One, you can't understand my uh, my handwriting. Uh, It's just an absolute mess. But when I work with clients and you guys have both gone through this is we sit down and we really figure out, okay, what's life all about? What are you looking for? And of course, with all business executives, what's the first thing they want to do is they want to jump to, all right, I need help in my business. Well, well, great. Mm -hmm. This is is one of the foundational pillars to achieve the uh, what you want to in your overall life. So let's focus first on where we're going. And then as we start to lay out the various pillars, our health, our nutrition, our fitness, our relationships, our business, I'm really looking for, you know, what's going on in each one of those. And as entrepreneurs, as dentists, we're always running around trying to figure out, okay, what am I missing? And we're constantly trying to add things to our life. And what it comes down to is figuring out what's getting in the way. And it's really counterintuitive. Uh, So you guys saw that, that process where it's, okay, what's getting in the way? And then what's really the linchpin? What's that one or two things we can concentrate on that if we address this, everything else is taken care of? So it's, it's kind of a, you know, I, I use post-it notes all over the place, these big post-it notes, and I start drawing. And then what very, happens very often is I'll take a different color. I'm like, wait a second, why is this linking to this? And why is this linking to, what's this? And it's like, this is it. I just did this with a client today. I pulled it back out. Um, he went through a, a very traumatic change in his life. And he knew, you know, we knew a year ago that that was the linchpin that was controlling everything else. By the I think, in the, sorry, Peter, what, specifically, you're talking about the one thing that adds to all others? Not adds. Or, 
something that's getting in the way or needs to change. And generally what it is, is it's not, it's something that might be in a deficit um, or it might be something that's, that just needs to be removed in, in its entirety. But what we think is we're missing some knowledge or we're missing doing something. And it's generally stopping something or removing something or dramatically changing it. Hey, Pete, is your audio low for Thora, by the way? A little bit, a little bit. I mean, I can hear him just fine, but maybe it's a... Uh, yeah, with that again, Thor. Sorry, I don't all right, that's all right. No, absolutely. With, with that professional setup, he can just hit a button and beep, beep, back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your audio is now perfect. Perfect, Thank you, Thor. Cappuccino I'll speak up some more. Thor, I thought what what I thought was really cool, and I told Craig this when we had finished, kind of going through that the long process of just kind of goal setting and looking at your life as a thirty thousand foot view, and then breaking it down very granular. But also, like, I always talk about, like, reverse engineer, and I say this term, but I had never really gone through the process of literally reverse engineering it, starting at the end and working backwards, like, step by step by step. You know, and, yet, and that term is a little bit of a cliche. It's thrown around a little bit, but, and I think everyone understands it conceptually, but I don't think we've, I don't think you've, it's the first time I've been through it as a practice. Okay. And it was, it was super empowering because like Craig has always said, like how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? And, and to break it up, these big goals and these big things that I want to accomplish, as I reverse engineered it and literally chunked it up, I was like, wait, this, is, this isn't going to be that hard at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it's what you guys do, right? A patient comes in and says, I want an amazing smile. Okay. What do we want this to look like at the end of the day? We want this to happen. Great. What do we need to do? Do we need to remove some teeth? Do we need to right. put in some, you know, what's going to happen? You, you can't start, you just don't start to, at the beginning and go, well, let's just kind of figure it out. If you're going to build a house, what are you going right. to do? Would start with a set of blueprints. You're not going to put the roof up before you put the foundation in. You know, yeah. the, your brain just doesn't, the funny thing is, is that, you know, uh, I'll be uh, uh, a little public about what I'm going through. I'm going through something right now and I'm kind of suffering over uh, some stuff that's going on work-wise it's just challenging and the brain is is a is a tool that will go off on its own into the mental tornado of circulating bullshit and you won't be able to you can't plow ahead it just ruminates left alone the brain is just is this very powerful tool that will solve problems that you don't even have so <laughs> it, it's it's um I think that when you map it, like the, like the way you, you know, no one, we all, we all have these lists, the, the, the to-do list that we have to get done, but no one wants to go through the, the painstaking, you know, one hour, two hours of actually mapping it out. And that's what you did so well for us. You mapped it all out and say, this is what's causing that. Everything that you're doing is causing your own problems. But mm -hmm. if you don't like to do that, we don't like to see it that way. So. Yeah. And, you know, and with problems, you know, here's something really interesting. Let, you're, let's say you're a dentist in the United States and, and with any practice, with any business, of course, there's going to be issues that come up. Both of you have, you know, things that, uh, that prop up in your practice all the time. Mm -hmm. Think about the number of people in the world that would literally sever a limb to have our problems. Yeah. Here, it, you can move to the United States. You're going to have an amazing practice. Oh, and by, by the way, from time to time, you're going to have people that leave your practice. You're going to have people, that, uh, customers that are not happy with you. You may have some collections issues. Oh, and dealing with those insurance companies, that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, but by the way, this is what you get. There, there are people literally around the world, probably millions that would sever a limb to have our problems. But we wake up every day and go, oh, man, you know. I've got it, it rough, right? I got it rough. Mm -hmm. You know, we lose perspective. We never compare ourselves to those that we are above. We're always comparing ourselves to the person above. And, and I think it's pretty common in dentistry, Thor, too. I think uh, for whatever reason, we're really hard on ourselves. I think it's because we, we, are, we, are, we feel like the way of the world is on our shoulders when we're in a practice, meaning that we're running the business, we're doing the business. Like Craig said before we hit record, like we're the, we're the uh, what did you say? We're the cook. And we're managing the restaurant and we're cooking in the kitchen. Right, right. Um, so but basically it, when you got, when you have four pots in the stove, you can't go out and see how your maitre d's doing or your, you know, receptionist. We can't physically be in the same space. Most business people that are, you know, counterparts, they don't actually, they're not technicians in their business at all. Like there's no broom. There's no guy that owns a broom shop that actually makes the brooms like a real shop. Like he has people that makes the brooms. 
So it, it's just, it is, and, and dentistry is very he- heads down, like it's head, head down, it's myopic. You know, our, our successes and failures lie in the micromillimeter, whereas business is in the macro. Right. In our business, you have to be macro focused. Yeah, unfortunately, Thor, because of that, I think that, you know, you hear a lot of, you hear a lot of happy dentists, I'm not going to lie, but you also hear a lot of unhappy and unfulfilled dentists. And, um, you know, we were talking earlier before, again, before we hit record about the, the, the epidemic of kind of suicide going on, not just in dentistry. Dentistry has always had this myth, Thor, and, you know, it's almost, yeah. it, it, you know, you probably heard it, you hear it all the time, dentist and suicide. Um, but that's, you know, but that's on the rise in our society as a whole. I don't know if, if it's on a rise for dentistry too. Do you know, Craig? Um, I've tried to research it. I know suicide's up 28% in the last like 17 years, which is freaking crazy. Um, but dentistry, what I was trying to find, I know Kyle Stanley was talking about it, um, but I believe it's, it's up as well. Um, so yeah, I believe, I believe it is um, uh, up as well. But I think it's, uh, you know, I, I wonder if, if it's part of the social media slash podcast slash access to information, you know, that's out there. Everybody now can, can see what other people are doing. Yeah, the comparisons. You know, yeah. so I can see when I'm toiling some days, Pete, you know, you're my good buddy. But I, I know some days when I'm having like getting my ass kicked at work. And you're like with the kids at four o'clock playing in, you know, at your house. I'm like, shit, that's like, I'm, I'm the one that's toiling here. Or, you know, I found myself during the hard points of last week, sleepless in bed, you know, paging through Instagram and looking at Anthony Bourdain. I actually looked at his posts. I'm like, dude, this guy's a freaking rock star. This guy's got it all figured out. He's paid to travel, have fun, drink beer and have really good, bonded conversations with iconic people like that is life that this is a guy living life on his own terms. And, you know, that one really hit me because a couple of days later, you know, I literally found myself, I remembered thinking that like this guy's got it all figured out and kind of feeling bad for a minute that I don't have Anthony Bourdain's life to your point, Thor, about comparing yeah. only never comparing down and uh, seeing him take his own life. He was in so much pain that he did that. Um, just shows that, you, you know, it's, it's the context. People that survive cancer, people that go through terrible things actually report higher levels of happiness. It's freaking crazy. Um, but, you know, I, I, I found myself a couple days later after the Anthony Bourdain thing. Actually, it was a couple days before Anthony Bourdain. I was talking to my buddy Tom and I was, tell, I was, I was telling Tom, he's like, what's going on? You don't sound good. I'm like, hey, I'm going through this, that, and the other thing at work. And instantly he said, oh, I'm really sorry about that. He's like, I, I kind of know what you're feeling about. I just buried um, my daughter, um, you know, or like I just lost my daughter. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 I'm, I'm Tom. I'm so, no, 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 I'm not going through that, you know. Um, and it's just incredible that, you know, as human beings, we, without that context that we'll, we'll choose to suffer and we'll choose to, you know, there's something in us that wants to suffer. And dentists have it more, I think, because of the ranking and the schooling that we have. We, the way we go to school, I, I believe that medical school is different in that it's a bunch of people rounding together, co-diagnosing, talking about things, kind of, kind of pontificating about a diagnosis. Dental students are closed off and saying, what do you think this is? You're good. You're not good. You're number 27. You're number 48, class rank. I think our schooling separates us out a lot in a lot of ways. We don't have that co-resident rounding type thing. Most general dentists don't have that. And then when you get out in practice, you actually have a, you're more of an isolate. It's more of an isolationist type of practice, right? So just like you're saying. So um, anyway, Thor, what do you think? What do you think about all that? Well, you know, it, it, what's interesting is that people confuse happiness with fulfillment, you know, and I think we're a society now where we're running, to, uh, we're on a happiness trail where we're trying to figure out how to create happiness, but fulfillment really comes when you contribute to others uh, and you get out of yourself. You know, suicide is uh, when someone feels extremely depressed uh, and feels like it will not change and that the only way to get out, it, it's, it's a permanent um, place. Um, if they don't believe that it's permanent, then generally uh, suicide will not, not occur. I've done a lot of work in, uh, in this area actually with uh, an organization for the last uh, 15 years. Um, and it comes down to generally the rules and the values that people have. 
uh, what they want most in life is most painful for them to get and they can't figure out how to get out of a perpetual pain. Um, and generally, they are not contributing much um, or don't feel like they're contributing much outside themselves. It's about getting things in versus uh, giving out. Um, so generally, if someone's depressed, you know, first thing I'm always uh, looking for is figure out ways that you can contribute <laughs> to others. Do you deal with a lot of um, executives that should, I mean, what's your, your typical client is someone that you, that is probably very successful, but do they always feel successful? They, they think that something, adding yeah. something to it. Here's, here's a statistic for you. So 20, uh, 75% of my clients make uh, personally a million dollars or more a year. 25% of my clients make over uh, $10 million a year. And the level of happiness um, when they, they generally come to see me, you'd be surprised at the level of dissatisfaction um, and things going on. You would think that they had it all figured out, everything should be great, but somewhere in there, there's something that is wounded or hurt uh, that they just don't have fixed uh, and they're looking for answers. So what have you seen, and you don't have to obviously give names or examples yeah. individually, but like, what, has you, what have you seen has been the evolution towards that genuine path of happiness? You know, you said you talked about fulfillment and happiness and sometimes yeah. it gets confused. Um, but what have, you, what have you seen being the change in them? And I, yeah. and I know you just mentioned, obviously, helping other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gratitude is probably one of the biggest things. Uh, when you can get into a state of gratitude and truly be grateful for what you have, but also have a... Uh, uh, a drive to achieve more, to be more, to do more, to love more, to give more. Uh, you don't want to become complacent, but what ends up happening is so often executives set this goal. I, I want to get to a million dollars a year in income. And it's mm -hmm. really cool when they get there and it lasts for about five seconds and it's like, that's cool, but it was unfulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a purpose behind it. So one of the things you know, that you and both of you, have, we did together is, okay, what's really important here? You know, a business takes up an awful lot of our time. And what ends up happening very often is that we're not business owners, but the, actually the business owns us. And we go through and we feel like we're on this, this uh, gerbil wheel, right? It's just constant. And the faster we run, the more money we make. It just seems to keep going faster. And we're just exhausted. Um, it's about today. Are we having closer, more intimate relationships or are we having more distant relationships? You know, more we're distant. To, yeah, exactly. It's supposed to be this society of connectivity, but we're not. You know, growing up, we had dinner together as a family. You know, that was just, everybody was home by five, six o'clock and we had dinner. There was true connection. Conversations went deep. Now it's, you know, here's my life on Facebook. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, here's my orchestrated, curated life on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Right. Hootsuite's putting out most of the, or Buffer's putting out most of the, uh, the post. So it's about getting back to what's really, what's really important. Uh, not what society says, but what's really important to them. You know, it's funny, Thor, I was just recently on vacation and uh, with my family and it was, it was great. And I was sitting there talking to my father and I said, you know, for so long, I really wanted the, the goal. Whenever I thought about one day selling my business or retiring or whatever, it was like the, this proverbial sitting on the beach and like just relaxing. And, and I actually had a good spell of that because we were on kind of an isolated island in, in Bahamas. And it kind of dawned on me and it's dawned on me before, but like what I really love, I think if I set a goal and I get to it, I get a little bit depressed because what I really – what, what I really love is the, is the, is the journey and the hustle and the grind yeah. doing it. Yeah. And that was a, that was some big clarity for me. And, and, it, and I kind of was, you know, you, you know, people talk about early retirement and this and that, but I was like, you know, what I've been looking for is how do I fa find sustainability in perpetuity almost like, right. How can I do what I'm doing at the, and, and just keep doing it? Because I, there's no really such thing as retirement because it'd be, horrible like i would if i if you told me i had to sit on the beach forever and ever i'd i'd i might consider what we've been talking about earlier yeah. god forbid bro i i think that well we've all we've all kind of been um sold this bag of goods that this is what happiness looks like i mean we've had major marketing companies doing psychological tests on human beings like you and me and thor for decades the advertising um complex that exists in the in, 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 in America is just immense 
So we've been marketed and positioned. It's almost like the Truman Show. Remember that thing where everything's been you know, curated <laughs> yeah. for us? So we've been sold a bag of goods at more and this and has to look like this. And, and if it doesn't look like that, then you're a complete fuck up and you, should, you shouldn't have, you, you don't deserve anything. So there's a human, I think there's a human thing as well that has self-doubt when our brains are always working actively, overactively. And our ego is always working to say, what is this? What does this mean? Am I good enough? And all this stuff. And you wrap that in with like, you know, seeing guys like you on vacation or your friends on Facebook and they're putting their best foot forward. Even Anthony Bourdain. I mean, right. that dude offs himself. I mean, how, what could he have had that would have been better? Like, you know, his mom even said like, I just can't understand he had everything. So, I mean, it's, it's just shocking to me that that happened. I'm sorry we're spending so much time on it, but after Kyle Stanley, Kyle Stanley like texted me, like, you know, I, I wrote something. I'm like, wow, Anthony Bourdain. He's like, dude, that's why I brought up suicide in your podcast. Cause it's a big, big deal. And I think that we have to be sensitive. There's people out there that are listening to this that are like either they're trying to get an edge. They're saying, Hey, I want to be more like Pete or I want to have something like Craig has or, and, and they are just trying to get that edge. But what's motivating them is they're also scared because I don't, they don't want to fail. Like all of us don't want to fail. So I think we're doing, you know, I know we're spending a lot of time on this, but I think that if there is somebody out there that's thinking this, what are the tools that they can use? What are the practices? Cause Tony, Thor, Thor's a Tony guy and Tony, and sorry, you Pete now. And Tony always says, like, your brain is an instrument of survival. Its primary purpose is to find out what's wrong in order to keep you alive. It's an evolutionary adaptive instrument that's like, is there a bear behind that rock? Could that thing kill me? Mm -hmm. you know, is this ceiling going to fall on Yeah, self-preservation. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not. And, and if the brain and your mind is always trying to find out what's wrong, who's going to try to keep you happy? Who's mm -hmm. in the context? Who's gonna you need exercises that counteract that, right, right. Thor? I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, meditation and gratitude should be the first thing every single morning. Well, you said something too, when we were on a call the other day, oh, you, the call the other day that was um, something to the effect of, he said, uh, he said, stress is knowing the only way to combat stress is action. Action. Stress comes from knowing what to do and not doing it. Meditation does not fix stress. You guys are good. You guys listen. Well, that was Craig. I, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna fumble that one way better, but Craig's pretty good at that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we we pay you money, Thor. We're gonna. That's gonna all right. Say. Good. Excellent. Not every, you know, not everybody is a great student. Yeah, I literally even have a Trello uh, bucket or, or page. I forget what they call it, Trello. The Trello a card. A card. Oh, I got a card. I got a Trello card that is called stressors, and I keep a list of everything that stresses me. Try it. If you're stressed out about something, write everything down that you're stressed mm -hmm. out about. I guarantee you when you finish writing out the list, you'll be less stressed. Now, simply put in your calendar a reminder. Spend 20 minutes and work on taking an action to move one of those things forward. You don't even have to resolve it. Forward progress, expansion, growth, movement, that will actually make you feel less stressed. That's amazing. Actually, that's great advice. Um yeah, that, that actually struck a nerve with me because I think that what we do, like Craig, what Craig is talking, and Craig, you're probably guilty of that right now, is, is you've got, let's see, a handful of problems and you're just letting them like do a whirly derb above your head, like yeah. just continually just doing this. And if you can write them down, be like, look, I'll get to you later, bitch, you know, and then, and then circle, yeah. like, <laughs> like and, circle up with them later. And, and you're lucky if they're outside your head. Generally, they're in your head and they're spinning around. They're arguing with each other. And it just starts this, this whirlwind. Yeah, I was, um, I'm listening to that book right now, um, Eckhart Tolle. Um, not, not The Power of Now. It's, um, holy shit, it's so freaking good, man. It's so freaking good. It's uh, his second book, A New Earth. I, I'm listening on Audible, and the guy's yeah. voice is the cure for insomnia. It's, <laughs> it's brutal. I, I, that should be like a, they should do that in buds training for Navy SEALs, if you could like listen <laughs> <laughs> Do, while doing flutter kicks in the breaking uh, South Pacific. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he, he said this thing. He's like, if human being, like, imagine two ducks fighting. Like, two ducks get near each other. They squawk like crazy. They get right in each other's faces. Then they back down or one backs down. They both paddle away. They flap their wings because they want to get out that built-up angst. They, they use some physical activity. They mm -hmm. walk on their butts and they leave it alone. But like as human beings, it would be the, the, if the if a duck had a human being brain, it would be like 
I can't believe that guy got within one inch of my face. So who does hell, who does he think he is? Like I'll show that guy and like for days, hours, months, or years, we will replay that problem. Tell other people about it. You know what happened to me this morning? And you talk about my problems, the whirly bird in my head. I'm also like at the point where like, I've got to stop freaking talking about this stuff. Like, you know, hey, how's things going? I can see you're not doing, oh, and go through the story again. When you storyboard what's going on, like you activate the certain part of your body that wants pain. Like Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body, Thor. Are you aware of yeah. that? Yeah. This thing that wants to feel the pain. Yeah. And, and you feed it. The more you talk about it, you feed it. And kids have it. Like you could have a newborn baby that just cries all the time to the point that he makes the entire family miserable. Like yeah. where, did, where did he get that? that yeah. It's innate in some of us. I'm uh, coaching a, uh, an athlete that's trying to get to Kona, which is the world championships for um, uh, Ironmans. And uh, I said, so her worst uh, thing is running. So I said, on the running, how, how are you going to, you know, what, what's what you're running? She goes, I'm just trying to figure out how to grit and bear it and just get through it more. You know, I'm trying to build up that mental, you know, that physical and mental uh, muscle. I'm like, great. So what happens when you're sitting there, you're grunting and you're, and you're gritting? I said, are you spending more energy or less energy? Of course, more energy. I said, why don't you just try smiling? She goes, I hate running. I'm like, I can tell. I said, what if you enjoyed it? Do you think you'd be better at it? She's like, yeah, but I don't. I said, just fake it. Just smile. And in the worst case, you're just going to annoy all the other athletes. They'll be like, why is she smiling? She's, she's on the, the 20th mile of a 26-mile uh, marathon after sw- biking 112 miles and swimming two and a half miles. But are you saying like physiologically you can fool yourself, fool your oh, body? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All the time. Motion, yeah, you your motion and your physiology dictates your emotion. Your emotion doesn't dictate your physiology. Say that one more time, Thor, for the listeners. Yes. Your emotions do not dictate your physiology. Your physiology dictates your emotions. Yeah, they did some cool studies on that, by the way. Wow. It's called misattributional theory. So, like, if, if, pay, if people, like, on a double-blind um, study, like, if someone stands at a precipice to a cliff and they're physically nervous, or if you take a date to a scary movie – People more often report being sexually attracted to their date if they're a scary movie because your heart is beating fast. You're like, oh, shit, I must like this guy. Or Mm -hmm. I'm physically scared. I must like you. Or if you go through like a scary (laughs) incident with somebody, you'll tend to like them better. We don't even know our own selves. It's crazy to to not. It's actually liberating as a, a, a in the modern world to say, I have no idea what the hell is going on in my life. I don't know anything about me. It's a pretty cool thing. It's a blank canvas at that point. You know, rather than being so confident in things, I think. Yeah, anytime you want to change your emotional state, just simply change your physical state. And watch the language that you tell yourself. It's hard to do, too. I've been in that. I, like, I've even after going to Tony Robbins, like, I, I, I can recall being in, like, just a bad, angry, grumpy pants. And I was like, get up and go jump on the trampoline. And I couldn't, I could hardly, I couldn't make myself do it. It's a muscle. You got to train it. Yeah, you got to do it over and over. Again. I just because I just wanted to stay grumpy pants for a of while. Course. Like, Why? And, yeah. you, Why? We, because we it serves that. a need. Yeah. It's funny how we want the shit we exactly. don't. Exactly. Yeah. We say we don't want it, but we clearly want oh, it. Oh yeah. No question. Yeah. The, the number. You know. If, have you ever met someone that always has an issue? Oh yeah. What, yes. what ends up happening? If if I came to you and I said, "Hey guys, uh, last last month I made a million dollars." You guys be like, great, that's awesome. I can't see you again next month. Hey, I made another million. That's great. Pretty soon you're going to be like, I'm tired of hearing Thor talk about this. Now, if I came to you with a problem, you would give me sympathy. And I kept doing that month after month after month. You would continue to give me sympathy and love. But it's interesting. Success, we're, we're happy for a while, but then it's like, all right, I've heard enough. But people get addicted to their own problems because that's a way of them connecting. Think about that. Who do you know that always seems to have a problem, always in a bad mood? Yeah. yeah. Just look at your Facebook friends if you don't know any. Who's the <laughs> exactly. One, you know, who's yeah. the one like, you know, oh, just shoot me. It's Monday. It's around 11 o'clock. Yeah. And, oh, these and politics they, have ruined my life. Right. And, and, and they, you know, they, get a lot of, they get a lot of outreach, a lot of sympathy. Yeah. But that's that who they are. Like I have, you know, there's a woman that I – that was on Facebook the other day. Like she said, like, I need a dentist recommendation, but not, you know, Spodak Dental Group. So I just post them like, hey, you know, what can I do to help you, whatever. And every response I said, even though it was loving and kind, is like, this response is outrageous. And it was literally like, hey, let me know what I can do to help. 
this is outrageous and everything is, I mean, it's crazy. So those people that want to stay pissed, they will stay pissed. Yep. You just have to stay away. You can't engage in that because, you know, when you have people in your life in that space, it's really caustic for you. You'll get scathed by yep. that. Thor, I want to, I want to bring it back to, uh, to, to dentists for a second. Yeah. This um, wasn't about dentists. I thought this was all That's about right. None of this applied to dentists. If you're a dentist. Well, like- no, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Busting my, so I, th- our days are, are, are very, very full, very frazzled, very staying on time. We get anxiety about that. There's not much, there's not many Zen moments going on in, in the day, right? It's just, it's just usually just chaos, controlled chaos after controlled chaos after, you know, patient after patient. Yeah. Yeah. Getting on time, dealing with stuff. <clears throat> Would what kind of routine you know and you to, and you talk a lot about morning routines and kind of priming the day and and um, you know if you win the morning you can kind of win the day. Like what would you recommend given the context of of what you know a dentist life to be? What would you what would you recommend would be a really good quick thing that that some of our listeners could implement that would categorically change you know the stress of the day? Yeah. Every top performer has a pre-event ritual. Uh, whether you're a world-class speaker, whether you're an athlete, uh, whether you're a business executive, every single one that is absolutely crushing it has a pre-event routine. They set themselves, before they walk into the boardroom, they set their body, they set their intention, they set their mind before they walk in. Athletes nice. do it before they go out on the field, they get dressed. So as you're going from room to room, don't let what just happened in the last room bring, come into the next room. Before you step in to see the next patient, take a moment. First thing I always recommend is take a breath. We don't breathe enough. I mean, literally just take a, a deep, soothing breath and put a smile on your face. Set yourself, whatever, whatever it is. It, you might have a, a routine with something that you have uh, your uniform or your um, scrubs, um, something, uh, uh, fix your watch. Uh, pull up your sleeves, whatever it is, it's something that you do each and every time. And what it does is it resets and you want to bring that intention into that next room. I love that. You know, honestly, so my long in my career, like I didn't do that obviously, but like I'm looking back and thinking like, God, that would have made such a difference. Cause sometimes I would just rip off gloves, fly into one room, be right. like, what's going on, Miss Jones? What do you need? Like, you know, like what do you need? Yeah. What can I, do? I got like three other people. I need to get out of here. And yeah. right. it would take, it would have taken literally 10 seconds to change everything about that, like preempt, like before, meaning take that long, deep breath, kind of set myself, put my shoulders right, smile, and go in, calm, yeah. cool, collected. And her, like I, I would have, I'm sure I gave people, you know, bad experiences based on the fact that like, oh, Doctor B's all flustered today, right? Yeah, I mean, but could it, you imagine it, getting getting on a jet to go cross country and the pilot comes out and goes, oh my god, what's going on? We got passengers. Oh what? god, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> So that is, that is great advice. And that's something I think that's very um, real because it doesn't add a lot of complexity to our day. Like just even adding that one granular piece of advice, if you, if from a takeaway from this, from this podcast, would I think really change the game? Don't you think Craig, do you do that? You know, I, 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 you know, as, as human beings, we're kind of stuck in our own little head. we're, We're stuck in our own space. And obviously I have these really, you know, I'm affected by what's going on around me. Funny thing is, is everybody knows when you're in that state. So you think as your doc, as the doctor in the practice that you can just have a shitty day and everything will be fine. Um, that your team knows when that's happening. Yeah. Had my team tell me they can yeah. hear by the way I walk that I'm not in a yeah. good space. I didn't know that I walk differently. They can hear my footsteps being different. And it's not just about you. You're setting off like, you know, 80, 90% of communication is nonverbal. You're screwing up your entire organization by what you're sending out. So even like with the stuff I was going through the last couple of weeks, I've just been in a crappy mood and I've crushed my team. I didn't say anything or do anything, but your energy can crush people or build them up. I love that quote. It says everybody has the ability to make someone happy. Some do it by merely walking into the room and others do it by leaving. Um, So your, your energy your energy is radiating and you can either make things or break things. And um, the magic is staying in that space and being aware of that biofeedback. Like we talked about with Jarek Robbins. We had Jarek, by the way, on uh, last, uh, last oh, week, nice. Thor. 
Um, and he's just learned so much from his dad. Uh, you know, it's hard not to have, you know, Tony Robbins as your dad and, and not have it rub off in some manner. But he talked about this thing used like the, that little biohack that you're that you try to focus and get your brain dialed in. That thing is so cool. Like we, we learn how to do a better crown prep, how to do a better endo, how to like increase, you know, we learn marketing courses. No one's talking about Mental health. Mental health. No one is talking about. There's no mental health podcast for dentists. There's no mental health course for dentists. And there are. And, and, it's, and it shouldn't be mental health because I think that has a negative connotation. Sorry hygiene, to cut you off. It should be almost be called like mental fitness or yeah. you know, because mental health means like oh I'm not crazy you know like so the the fitness you're right and that's why I think it's so important that's why I wanted to talk about kind of priming the day and I love that piece of advice Thor um, and Craig have you been using that fuse. Yeah, the Muse I have. So the Muse, that's time, right. Muse was a total cluster the first time. Easy. Like you're supposed to get birds if you can dial your brain in. I got like one bird. And like the next time I got like zero birds, so I went backwards. But then I got to the space where I just cleared my mind out, completely mm-hmm. cleared it out. I know, I'm sure. I've been using it every day. Every day. Have I, you really? really? Yeah, every How day. How birds have you gotten? Have you dude, ever? I, dude, it's like, it's like a, I get birds all over the place. Locks. I'm crushing it. So what are you getting like numbers of birds? Listen how I'm trying to like compete already. I'm like, God, what are you trying to quantify my I'll zen? I'll tell you how freaking relaxed I am, you son of a... No. It's like, I, get, I don't know. I don't know. I'll look at the birds. I'll take, I'll, I'll screenshot and taunt you with all my birds from now on. Now, this is great. I can't but, wait. But this is important. So just, we, you know, obviously I want to mention Muse. It's, um, it's a little thing that you buy. It's a piece of technology. I bought it on Amazon. It's 200 bucks, um, M-U-S-E. But it, it, it is a tool to help calm your brain. And, um, it, it has been working for me. And if you don't have that mental fitness, if you don't have those routines, what's going to take over is you're going to get shitty results. And we all know that. So, um, anything like that can help. But as far as that, I have people that to answer your question directly, I know I took a lot of the question here. You said, what do I do? I have people on my team, like my assistant, I told her like, watch out for me. If you detect my energy being off, like, let me know. So she's constantly like, you know, she's, she doesn't care. She's like, yeah, you seem stra- You seem like you're in a pit. You're pissed. I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, okay, we'll fix it. I tell people, like, tell me honestly how to how to act. I don't mind. So yeah, but you're fix. but you're a unicorn in that aspect. Like a lot of a lot of dentists, myself included, don't give people that latitude. Um, and maybe maybe we should. Maybe you know. Well, maybe you shouldn't look at the stress I've been having. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's working. Thor, Thor, go into some more hacks. Go into some more uh, morning hacks. So, so I wanted to know what uh, Craig was doing to, you know, what does he do to change change his, uh, his emotional state? Well, when I... When someone I hear, said brings it up and now you got to do something about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll use a bunch of techniques. Um, they, they work really well. So they work so well that I stop doing them and then I get stupid again and have to do them. So... At, at, when my when my mental fitness or my mental hygiene is, is at its finest, what I'm doing is I'll actually do something physical. So breaking my pattern, I'll do a physical thing. Like I'll, I, I get down and do push-ups. Oftentimes, yeah. that is freaking phenomenal, phenomenal. If you're pissed off, if you got all, I mean, like to the duck analogy, two ducks beaking, you know, barking at each other. They after they're done quacking their brains out. They flap their wings, get the energy out. Human beings, we don't get our energy out. We take the energy, it fuels our brain to create more drama. So just something physical. If you had one, and you can say, I don't have time for that. You don't have time not to do this. You can just take, how long does it take to do 10 Mm push-ups? Yeah. You're not going to sweat. You could be dressed like I'm dressed right now in a shirt or whatever and do 10 push-ups. And, you know, or, or have a, something physical to break the pattern. I think that's if I start doing pushups in outside of my operatories, my team is going to lo- think that I've lost my damn mind. <laughs> Tell them ahead of time. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> but it all comes back, it comes back to the same thing we talked about earlier. It's a physical movement. And the more um, effort that goes into it, the, the more it, uh, it will stick. And it stacks. This stuff stacks on it. You do it once. You do it tomorrow, you do it the next day, it starts to stack. It's a compounding effect. Yep. So what, what other things would you recommend, Thor? I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep circling yeah. it back to this. because yeah, That's good. Think- uh, so, so give me, uh, be a little bit more specific as far as what. The- uh, so you gave, a good, you gave a good hack for basically in between rooms. But let's talk about like what you would recommend prior to even going into the office. 
like how do you kind of set the day and you met you kind of alluded to the fact that like all the people that you know who are super high performers have a routine oh right? absolutely a, a morning routine and yeah. and I, I you know it's sometimes hard I, i'm trying and i'm daily to kind of commit to to my routine but like when i when i find that these routines are long and went long you know half hour yeah. routine of all this stuff i just i find myself dreading it as opposed to really setting me up so i'm 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 looking for a little advice that we can transfer to our listenership to really kind of help everybody kind of win the day. Yeah. Um, top performers tend to focus on very few things. Uh, they make things very easy. They don't uh, have a lot of uh, variables. They try to make their life as streamlined as possible. The clutter uh, is, is with the clutter in their lives, that tends to slow them down. So they get very streamlined, uh, whether it's picking, you know, wearing a white shirt to the office, uh, the same uniform all the time. So there's no selection there, having mm -hmm. the same thing for breakfast, having meals prepared ahead of time, having shoes and sneakers out uh, before the night before. So when they go to the gym, they just wake up and just put it right on and go. Um, they Minimizing decision making? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Absolutely. Um, they because, will because why because you only have limited bandwidth to be able to make decisions throughout the day and you're and you're using them you're burning them on shit that doesn't matter correct stake it the... yeah oh yeah yeah remember really? you said that thor to us you said there's certain like 11 i thought it was like 11 or 11 hours or 11 instances what was it there was I, I remember us talking about that thor like there's only so many decisions you can make um i don't recall that conversation Okay, maybe I had it. I don't, think, I don't think. I don't you, think. You only get eleven through the day, Craig. No, I I just remember hearing something. I definitely don't have another, yeah, well, another well, friend named Thor, but um, <laughs> yeah, at least not a real one. I have imaginary friends named Thor. Well, you know, I try to be clever things. So after I say them, I just forget that I say them. So no, but it, it's true. Like you ever get home and like your spouse is like, "What do you want for dinner?" I'm like, I actually don't care. I could eat like a shoe. Yeah. Please don't make. <laughs> Well, there's, there, I'll, I'll give you an example. So I know what I'm going to have for uh, lunch and what I'm going to have for dinner by 6 a.m. in the morning. I already decide. It's off my decision-making list. So another thing that they do is they plan their day. They have it scheduled. Um, mm -hmm. They're not trying to figure out what to do next. They know exactly what they're going to be doing uh, next. They're not transitioning back and forth between things when, uh, you know, one of the things that we talked uh, with Craig is, look, mm -hmm. if you're going to be a, have a clinic day, do a clinic day. And just work your butt off. Don't be, you know, don't be transitioning from clinic day to working uh, and and working and training the uh, the team. Use that for yeah, another day. The schedule thing is pretty key because you know, going back to mental fitness, like even allowing time for. Well, I'll give the listeners kind of some some context of this. One of the things we've been working on, Craig and I, with Thor is developing a calendar that actually has, okay, here's when I'm going to see patients and here's when I'm going to work on the business and here's when I'm going to take my wife to dinner and, you know, basically being super intentional with the day and really being holistic about, about everything that makes our life happy. But I think really accounting for the stuff that we write, like I genuinely look forward to like, I have a two hour block to just like sit and be creative. Yeah. And like, that's my happy place is like yeah. literally just like thinking about ideas and like, Oh cool. I could do this new marketing thing or like, Oh, what if we get this 3d printer to do this? Like just literally sitting in a room and like creatively thinking without distractions. And if I hadn't, if, if we hadn't been doing this Thor, I'm getting to my point. If we hadn't been doing this, then I would have gotten the stuff that, that stimulates me and really energizes me would have been used from leftover time when I had time at yeah. the end of the day, or I'd have been too tired or just lack creativity right? And yeah, so I think that's a, that's been a game changer is really accounting or, or scheduling time for certain things and, and being rigid to them. You know, I, yeah. so go ahead, Greg. The one thing I wanted to add to that was, um, I was with, uh, I got a chance to hang out with, um, the shark tank dude. I guess his name is John's David Harrington. No, uh, Evan Harrington, uh, the, the black. Guy. Oh, oh, um, D Damon Johns. Yeah, David, David Johns. Johns. Super cool dude, man. Wow. But I was like, what's the one thing that you learned, you know, from all your journeys? Like, what's the one thing you can drop on me right now? We had a, just a, like a fireside talk literally by the fire. Was, he was staying when I went to Augusta. He was staying at the same uh, house I was at. So we hung out for like two or three hours, had a really cool deep conversation. He's like, you know what kind of pisses me off is like, everybody can make my calendar. Like my accountant can make my calendar. A call from a lawyer can make my calendar. But like my daughter has never made my calendar before. 
Hmm. Like get, make sure that you do that. And that's Thor to your credit. You, we have Thor helped us set up. Like I have a date night with one child every single week without fail. Cause like, if you look at your calendar right now, everybody can get on there, but who's going to put your children on there? Who's going to put your wife or your husband on there? Um, so I think that, that, that level of intention to say what's really important, it's huge. And that uninterrupted, that's what the kid, the kids really need your presence. Everybody needs your presence. And if you don't do that, you're really, you're setting yourself up for failure. And I, I want to thank, uh, that demon Johns for that. That was cool. That was cool. And, and, and tell your daughter ahead of time, honey, yeah. this is, this is your day. And what are you going to do? Cancel on her? No, God, no. No. My, when I have my date night with my daughter, she's like dressed up, right? Like posture, standing tall. I've actually showed up. I've I, I've like been so late. Like I just I leaped, reached down and grabbed the flower from like my yard and brought it to her. <laughs> and like going to dinner with her and like pr she proposes a toast. I've literally broken down crying at dinner. Like even wow. thinking about it, I get emotional about it. Uh, she's eight years old, and if you're not going to teach, you know, for the guys that are listening, if you're not going to teach your daughter how what to expect from a man who's going to and for the women listening if if they're not gonna you know do the same thing like who's gonna teach them these you know kids need you and and the giving that in giving that to people that therein lies the fulfillment when you make it really about you it gets really lonely and dark mm -hmm. so i think that that's kind of a bookend on that fulfillment thing, at least for me another thing is is that their default high performers their default is no opportunity yeah. no do this why, no. why? yes why because a yes means a no to something else every yes is a no to something else a yes that i'll do something is a no with uh dinner with your daughter his oh. yes to dinner with his daughter was a no to something else something else did not occupy that there's time. tons of no's there's constant no's now it's in my yeah. calendar so now there's no's happening every day like yep. someone asked me like oh you have a date night tomorrow at 6 30 you know can you do this i'm like well you know I, I, or they'll say i'm not going to do it because i don't want to yep. um you know i don't want to interrupt your date night so. yeah and language is another important thing people all the time ask me hey would you like to do this i'd love to do that well we're doing it here i'm not doing it well what do you mean you said you'd like to do it. i'd love to do it. i think it'd be a lot of fun but it is not in alignment with what i'm creating this year check with me in 2019 oh. i have very few things that i'm chasing this year and if it doesn't fit into one of those buckets, it doesn't get done. I remember uh, somebody was trying to get Richard Branson to do a keynote speech and uh, they kept raising the price, raising the price, raising his price. And finally, uh, he heard back uh, from the executive assistant and said, look, he's working on three things. This speech isn't one of them. It's not going to get done. It doesn't matter how much, it's gonna, how much you're willing to pay. And wow. just so you know, Richard's not motivated by money and it's hard for him to say no because when you pay him for a keynote, that goes to charity. Yeah. So it's actually tugging on his mission to help people as well. It's not like, hey, we'll pay you $5 million. He's like, I don't need the $5 million. Yeah. We'll pay a charity $5 million. So he's like, no, I can't do it. So I think when we all start off in our businesses, we're just happy that anyone would ask us to do anything. Like I remember someone asking me to uh, speak. I was like, okay, I'll fly myself there and I'll pay, I'll pay myself to get out there because I was just so honored. But at a certain point, you'll get busier and then you're saying no to more and more things and life gets busier. You get kids, you get, you know, other responsibilities. So I think it's just important to constantly be evaluating um, where you are, where you're at. And, yeah. um, and, and knowing what your overall mission is, what's your vision. And many people don't understand that. They never took the time to sit down and figure out where do I want to go with my life? What do I want my life to look like in five to 10 years? And we start making decisions based on our short-term goals. Sometimes that's how do I want to get through today? You know, others set annual goals, but really sitting back and saying, I can't tell you the number of people that I work with that have gotten to such levels of success and are really pissed off because they ended up in a position where they never expected to get to because it was not in alignment with what they wanted for their overall life. You got to take the time to understand that. Mm -hmm. Don't start running until you know where you're going. Yeah. I mean, look at how you pack for a vacation. You plan out everything. What are you going to do? And we don't plan out our lives. Life just happens. And it's just, yeah. there's no, and things change. Right. But I mean, a general idea of what you want your life to look like. Once you have that, then you just start filling in the other pieces. And the business is just one of those pieces, just one of those pillars. Wow. Yeah. I'm like taking notes here and uh, always learning something. 
Always learn something. We all are. Craig, you got anything? You got anything else in closing? Um, I I just think um that uh, again, uh, dentistry is um it's a lonely place. I'm happy there's forums like this where we can get together and share our our struggles, our successes, and our struggles, and um whatever you're going through, if you are going through some stuff and you're looking for the next level, if you're listening to this uh, podcast to get that edge, there's nowhere you really need to be. Um, you're already where you need to be. You've already arrived. There's nothing you actually need. Um, everything is right where it's supposed to be. And don't, uh, don't, don't sell yourself short or judge yourself too harshly. Be easy on yourself. You actually achieve more when you're happily achieving than achieving to be happy. So, um, that's, that's all I got right now at the moment um, after just coming through a, a couple of tough days. Yeah. It, you can obviously tell it's weighing on your heart, you know, the, uh, the with the, the Anthony Bourdain and the Kyle Stanley talks and just dentistry as a yeah. whole. I mean, we're super sensitive about it. I mean, you almost can't even bring up the, the suicide word. It's, it's like that, it's that touchy in, in our profession, Thor. So yeah. um, anyway, I mean, in, in all, in all professions, I'm sure, but like dentistry is just, it seems to be a little bit more pervasive. Um, so yeah. anyway, let's end on a high, let's end on a high note, Thor. What advice would you give to a 26 year old dentist at, 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 uh, this stage in the game? Like, let's assume we've got someone like, what advice would you give to, to me if I was a dentist, just, just getting out the gates, figure out what your lane's going to be, pick that lane and go deep, specialize, figure it out create relationships that are going to last a lifetime. Uh, your best uh, building blocks are going to be your referrals and become known as the guy, the girl in that particular space. Uh, it's going to be a period of your time, a life where you're going to have to say no to a lot of things. Uh, it's going to have to be about work. It's going to have to be about the grind. You're going to have to put in the hours, work harder than anybody else, learn more than you can possibly imagine, become known as the expert. Um, man, I love that. That was awesome. Yeah. I wish I could have said, I mean, that's, that is exactly the advice I would give. I, I think be well, the P, man. Well, P, what, what we can do is we can edit him out and we'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just insert right here. Hey Pete, what are the top <laughs> things that you could say? Well, <laughs> Thor, yeah. you're a busy guy. Appreciate your time. That was awesome. I cannot wait to get this published for everybody. Um, it was awesome. I really enjoyed just talking with you guys for a while there. I was just sitting there listening and talking to you guys. I forgot that like we're like recording, we're recording for a podcast. It, exactly. Um, that's pretty cool. I thought we were just having one of our talks, but again, Thor, you dropped massive value for, for our, for our listeners. Um, Craig, you were pretty on point today too. I must, I might say. Yeah. And I'm, I don't want, thank you, Pete, but I don't want anybody to feel sorry. I'm just, I am sensitive about it all. And I, I want, I want to use our vehicle now that we're getting a lot more listenership and people are telling me they're listening. I want, we have, we have an influence that we'd be, um, we'd responsible. Be remiss, we'd be remiss if we weren't reaching out to all of our prof professionals, not just the ones who are, you know, kicking ass and taking names, but also the ones that are, you know, kicking their own ass too. So we're all yeah. here, all of our profession. Well, guys, okay. I really appreciate uh, you having me on today. It's an honor and a privilege to uh, to work with both of you. You guys are absolutely superstars, and uh, I, I I've seen this journey before, so it, it's it's so it's so inspiring from where I sit because I see where this is going. I probably see it even clearer than than t the two of you, <laughs> uh, which is which is natural. It's tough to kind of see from ourselves of, of where this is going, but I'm really excited for uh, the journey you guys are on and I'm really privileged, privileged to be a part of that. So um, thank you for, uh, for allowing that. And we might note that Thor is a speaker at the summit. Thor, Thor has yes. agreed to. So if you love what he said, get your ass to Atlanta and come hear him live. You know, yeah, that, that's yeah. when else can you listen to superheroes? Right? <laughs> and if anybody has any uh, questions or anything about anything that was discussed uh, today, you know, if they send me an email at Thor at ThorConklin.com. I'd be more than happy to uh, personally uh, either get on a phone with them for a few minutes or uh, write them back. Man, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you for doing that, yeah. Thor. That's, that's, oh, that's incredible. And point. yeah, we'll put that, we'll put that in the, in the show notes if you didn't, uh, didn't grab that. But anyway, Y'all have an awesome, awesome evening. Have a blessed evening. And uh, yeah, Thor, thanks again. And we'll chat soon. Pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, right, guys.